Good morning, church. It's Friday morning. Take your Bibles and go back to 1 Kings chapter 3. We're, we're discussing now a gentleman by the name of Solomon. Again, we're in the midst of a study talking about people of the Bible and how they impacted the people around them and how God used them or how sometimes they can be an example of what not to do. Solomon is a little bit of both. Solomon had some great characteristics uh, that are expressed in various ways of devotion to God and, and God was pleased uh, with him. But in the end, he turned his heart away from God. And, and there was a problem, and the problem was a problem of the heart. Remember, we talked about that God gave him an understanding or a listening heart where, where he could listen to God and he could understand. It says he gave him a largeness of heart. That means his heart was strong and, and he was devoted to the Lord when he was younger. But notice again in chapter number three, we talked about this uh, yesterday, but in verse one, he made treaties with Pharaoh. He married the daughter of Pharaoh, which God forbid that they do that. He allowed the people to sacrifice, and not only did he allow them to sacrifice, he sacrificed in the high places in verse number two. And then it says in verse number three, and Solomon loved the Lord. Now that's scripture. So he did love the Lord. He, he was one of God's children. But let me remind you that even though he loved the Lord, you know, he's not mentioned at all in the New Testament except this. Jesus mentions how he was robed and his clothes were, were, uh, weren't even as good as the, the, the lilies of the field. Okay. And uh, that's the only real mention you, you have of Solomon. It's never, there's never a good mention of Solomon in the New Testament because he led Israel astray. But he says he, he loved the Lord walking in the statutes of his father, David. And that's while David was alive and when he was a young man. Then he said this, except he sacrificed and burnt incense at the high places. There was an exception in his heart. And that is best illustrated by how he ended up, ended up allowing his heart to go astray. So first of all, I want you to notice that he had a diseased heart. Every one of us have a diseased heart. In fact, I don't know if you know this, you have heart disease. The Bible says it this way, the heart is deceitful above all else and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You were born with a heart disease and that heart disease is sin. And sin is in all of us. It was in Solomon and it is in us. But when we come to Christ, Christ forgives our sins and then he gives us the power over sin. When Christ became my Lord, he came into my life, he washed and he cleansed me, he gave me his righteousness, so I have a new nature that is inclined towards righteousness, but I still have a heart that is diseased. My heart is still desperately wicked. My heart is still deceitful above all else, and if I let my heart guide me in decisions, most of the time it's going to lead me in the wrong direction. God's word was very specific concerning the rules of kings of Israel. You can find this in Deuteronomy chapter 17, and so I'm not going to read that for you for space, but go read Deuteronomy 17. It's verses 14 through 20. And those are Moses' instructions given by God. God gave them to Moses and said, when Israel gets a king, because he knew they were going to want a king eventually, here are some instructions to the king. Have the king write these things down, and the king needs to obey all these things. Here in, are the commands found in that scripture. Again, it's Deuteronomy 17, verses 14 through 20. So read that. And he says, you're not to multiply horses for yourself. Kings were not to multiply horses. They were not to turn to Egypt to supply horses. That's found in verse 16 of chapter 17 of Deuteronomy. Now notice he did that. He, he did exactly that. He turned to Egypt and made a covenant, made a treaty, so he could get horses, got him a wife, shall not multiply wives. And he even tells them why in verse 17 of Deuteronomy 17. He says, because they'll turn your heart away from God. You're not to multiply silver and gold, verse 17. Then he says that he is to write himself a copy of the law and make sure he memorizes it. So he's to have his own copy of that law, and he is to read it. Now, he even gives the reason why they're not to do these things. This is Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 19 and 20. It says this, And it shall be with him 
and he shall read it, that is this copy of the law, all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and be careful to observe all the words of this law and this statutes, that his heart may not be lifted above his brethren and that he may not turn aside from the commandments to the right hand or to the left and that he may prolong his days in his kingdom and he and his children in the midst of Israel. You write this law down, you read it continue all the days of your life. Never stop reading and memorizing and, and make sure you obey all these laws lest your heart be turned away and your kingdom be taken from you. So you'll prolong your days in the kingdom. Solomon broke every one of those. In fact, you'll, you'll find this back in 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 26, says he had 4,000 horses. He multiplied horses. That's a, anybody's estimate. That's a multiplication of horses and chariots. 12,000 men to ride <coughs> and work on those chariots. He made a treaty and compact with Egypt, which he was told not to do. Chapter 3, verse 1. He had a yearly annual income of 666 talents of gold. Folks, that is billions of dollars every year. He had 700 wives, <coughs> 300 concubines. That's multiplying. I don't, you know, two wives is too many. And he multiplied wives. And so I seriously doubt that Solomon wrote a copy. And if he did write a copy, he didn't read it. And if he read it, he sure didn't obey God's commandments. So he thought he could do things his way and that it was going to turn out okay. And <coughs> in a sense, it did. He got rich. He was popular. And it just seemed like things went well. But God is taking away the kingdom away from his family. And he gave not 10 tribes to another, another lineage, not David's lineage. And David's lineage only had the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin with it after this point. We cannot break God's laws. I don't care who you are, how great you are, how much God's used you in the past. You cannot break God's law and get away with it. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the lesson learned. And I pray we'll learn that lesson the easy way. Solomon learned it the hard way and it brought destruction to his family and to his nation. Help us, Father, to follow your dictates and not allow our hearts to be led astray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.